investigators try to find out what happened to her husband, then his parrot revealing strange truth. A possible murder witness is talking. The question is whether anyone should listen. Bud, the 20-year-old African gray parrot, was not allowed to take the stand in the murder trial of Glenna Durham. On Wednesday, a Michigan jury deliberated for eight hours before convicting the 49-year-old woman of first-degree murder for the 2015 shooting death of her 46-year-old husband, Martin Durham. Ever since Martin's death, Bud, whom the victim's family believes witnessed the tragic event, regularly repeats the phrase, don't shoot. Martin's ex-wife, Christina Keller, now owns Bud, and she's convinced that the bird's strange outbursts stem from the confrontation that ended with Martin being shot five times. The bird's antics might be laughed off were it not for the fact that Bud's owner, 45-year-old Martin Durham, was fatally shot at his home in May 2015, according to ABC affiliate WABC. His body was found near his wife, Glenna, who had suffered a gunshot wound to her head but is alive. Although police initially assumed Glenna Durham was a victim of the shooting, police reports obtained by WOOD-TV reveal that she is now suspected in the slaying. During the investigation, several people asked the police whether they had interviewed the Durham's parrot. The African Grey, named Bud, was smart and remembered a lot of things, said Richard McCambridge, one of Marty's cousins. McCambridge also asked the police whether he could have the bullet that killed Marty, apparently not realizing he was shot five times. The police said they needed it for evidence. By May 2016, one year after Marty's death, no arrest had been made. His side of the family, which had long clamored for Glenna's arrest, was frustrated. The family gave a local TV reporter a videotape that appeared to show Bud imitating two people in an argument. Clinging to the outside of his cage, the parrot's voice changes back and forth during the two-minute video. Shut up and get your expletive over here, he squawked, and then don't expletive shoot. The video was shot by Keller a month after Marty's death, she told the news. She had owned the parrot during their marriage and took him back after his death. She said she was alarmed by the video, but for 11 months, didn't tell anyone outside the family about it. Asked why the family finally shared it with WOOD-TV in May, Keller said she hoped it would spur public interest and push police into making an arrest. She's just evil and mean and dirty inside and out, Keller said about Glenna. It's kind of crazy and a lot sad. The TV report about the beaked murder witness drew attention around the world and three weeks later, Glenna was arrested. That bird picks up everything and anything, and it's got the filthiest mouth around, Durham's mom, Lillian Durham, told WOOD-TV. I personally think he was there, and he remembers it, and he was saying it, Durham's father, Charles Durham, added. Nuego County prosecutor Bob Springstead, however, did not permit Bud to take the stand telling the Associated Press in June 2016 that, I highly doubt there is any precedent for that. Springstead is correct that there's no precedent for a parrot taking the stand, but there has been a prior instance of a parrot's testimony being considered that scientists considered seriously. A parrot's ability to mimic what it has heard just a few times before is well documented. After all, even though the mechanisms by which it does so are not well understood. He said he's waiting for Michigan State Police to finish the investigation before deciding whether to file charges, noting that there's some evidence to support the idea that Glenna Durham killed her husband. Although the law allows charging on probable cause, I don't like to do that, especially when you have a very serious case, Springstead told the station. Also, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. When the investigation is done, I like to be satisfied there's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Durham told police that she remembers nothing of the shooting and regained her memory only once she was in the hospital. 
she left three suicide notes for relatives before the shooting that she claims she doesn't remember writing, police records reveal. I know for a fact I didn't kill my husband, police quoted her as saying. Doreen Plotkowski, owner of Casa La Parrot in Grand Rapids, told WABC that African gray parrots typically vocalize phrases they've heard many times, but the birds also are capable of using words they've heard on only a few occasions. Presented with video evidence of the bird using the violent language, Plotkowski told the station that she definitely heard the bird mimicking an argument between a man and a woman. She told the station that she also heard the bird say, don't effing shoot. In my mind, it's something that he's heard, definitely heard before, she said. And if it's fresh in his mind, he might even say it more now. Michael Walsh, a Muskegon, Michigan attorney, told WOOD-TV that the bird is inadmissible because there's no way to trace his dirty mouth. How did it get there? Walsh said, referring to the bud's words. If there's no reliable way of making that determination, you can't rule out that the bird witnessed a homicide or that the bird witnessed something on TV. Martin Durham's father told WOOD-TV that he's not ready to weigh in on his daughter-in-law's guilt or innocence. I got hope that maybe there's something out there that we don't know about that can change this whole situation, he said. Even if charges are brought against a suspect, Keller doesn't expect to see her parrot on the witness stand. I don't think he would be able to help the case, she said, but I think it puts the emotion out there, like there's a dead man there. In 1993, Max, an African gray parrot in California, was the crux of a defendant's case. Max had been crying, Richard, no, 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 for some time after his owner was murdered. The public defender for the defendant, whose name was Gary, not Richard, hoped to use the parrot to exonerate him. I was making the argument that it wasn't hearsay, it was a recording device, Santa Rosa attorney Charles Ogolnik told The Guardian. The Guardian reports that Dr. Irene Pepperberg, an expert on the African gray, vouched for the parrot species accurate recall, especially if the words had been uttered in a stressful situation. Researchers studying mimicry have suggested that animals like African gray parrots develop the ability because it is a way to display to others their ability to learn. As Michael Schindlinger, an assistant professor of biology at Lesley University, explained in Scientific American, the ability to mimic requires several key traits, the ability to hear, a good memory, and good muscle control, all of which are traits of interest to a potential mate. In the wild, parrot mimicry is thought to be a way for them to bond with their flock, picking up sounds they hear from one another. In captivity, they've been shown to accurately lift sounds from their various social interactions, and they seem to be especially drawn to excitement and commotion. They do not, however, seem to be able to synthesize new speech patterns, suggesting that it's safe to assume that Bud and Max only ever repeated verbatim what they had heard before. Ultimately, Max's testimony was not allowed, despite Pepperberg's support. The defendant was found guilty. Bud, too, wasn't allowed to take the stand, though it's not likely that the accuracy of his mimicry skills was the ultimate deciding factor. Springstead told the Detroit Free Press later in June 2016 that we are going to be looking at if it's information we need to prosecute this case. Ultimately, the decision not to use Bud seems to have been based as much on the fact that Springstead had built a solid case against Glenna as it was on uncertainty about Bud's reliability, or bizarre concerns over the mechanics of swearing the bird in. Unclear on how a parrot would even be sworn in in a court of law, Springstead asked the Associated Press a legitimately difficult question. To a parrot, are you raising a wing, a foot? If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.